Hello. In this first session, we're going to go over a basic overview of SubAssembly Composer's user interface. So what is a subassembly? Uh, those of you familiar with corridors and assemblies within Civil 3D are familiar with them. Um, they're built out of points, links, codes, targets, and a few other items. So if we take a quick look at Civil 3D help menu uh, for one of the subassemblies. So if you've ever right clicked on a subassembly and looked at uh, the help menu, you'll notice that it kind of gives you a diagram, kind of a basic diagram of what that subassembly is. It gives you attachment, input parameters, um, all the different parameters within it, target parameters. So if you want to target for width or slope, elevation, things like that, target a surface. Um, It'll tell you about that and then how it behaves. And very importantly, as we get downstream into um, quantity takeoffs and, and modeling the point links and shape codes. So that's a civil 3D help menu. Um, Subassembly Composer can create or you can create a help menu for that, a help document. Let me go ahead and open one of those as a sample. Okay, and this is a sample subassembly composer help help document. Um, as you build your subassembly, you may take some notes or something, and that uh, does a good job. But if you want a help document associated with that assembly, uh, so users that aren't familiar with the build of it can be just as familiar with your custom subassemblies as they are with the Civil 3D out of the box subassemblies. Uh, this simple word document is more or less a, a fill in the blank. Uh, that you can edit and add information to. It can be as detailed as you want. Um, it can be as simple as you want. It's not a requirement of SubAssembly Composer. It's just one of those additional value adds that uh, that you could bring to creating those custom subassemblies. So let's take a look at a final product in SubAssembly Composer just to take a quick glance at it. And this is SubAssembly Composer, built out of uh, a few basic um, windows that we'll take a look at, but uh, more or less you will you'll build that in the flowchart, and you'll see this in uh, the, the geometry within the preview mode. So a very simple to use interface, and we'll review each aspect of that interface. Okay, so understanding the interface, um, fairly straightforward. Uh, you, it can be found in your all programs um, under your products, under Autodesk, and then whatever year or version of SubAssembly Composer that you're currently working on. Typically, I go right from opening it up to the view pull down to set, heading a button that says Restore Default Layout. That means if any changes have been made uh, prior, you can restore it back to the default layout and you get that basic user interface that uh, has all the main information that you want to see. And within that interface, there's there's five main aspects to it. So number one here, we have the flow chart. Number two, we have the toolbox. Number three, we have the preview pane. Uh, number four, we have properties. And number five, which I think is most important, and we'll review that in detail, um, is the input and output parameters or the packet settings uh, dialog box. And then that is where really where we key in a lot of information, and that's the important parameters that we need. The toolbox shows us geometry, uh, such as your point, link, and shape. So basic shapes, basic geometry. Um, can you know you can build full subassemblies just out of those three. And then we'll get into more advanced geometry using curves, surface links, fillets, um, offset and looping geometry, uh, auxiliary points that we'll look at, and then different ways to um, create workflows within our flowchart. The flowchart itself is where we'll build that. It will drag and drop geometry from the left onto the flowchart in order of how we want to build it. We'll give it decisions, we'll give it parameters, uh, and we'll build it all in the flowchart. As we build it, it shows up in the preview pane. There's layout mode, roadway mode that we'll look at. Um, as we build it, it will display that in, in that preview. And then the most important thing here is the packet settings. Um, you know, so it can be pretty simple and it can be get pretty advanced, pretty complex. And we'll, and we'll look at that in detail in upcoming videos. On that settings and parameters. So we initially have the packet settings. This could be simple, could be a subassembly name and just a description. 
It could also be that help file document that I, we just looked at. Um, and it could also show an image that would be brought in with, with Civil 3D. You got the input parameters, input output parameters along the bottom, target parameters, super elevation, can't. So if you're doing rel and apply a super to rel, which is called can't, uh, you can apply that now in subassembly composer. The settings and parameters. So if you've ever gone to the properties in civil 3D of a subassembly, you will notice all the parameters in there. So, you know, asphalt width, asphalt depth, sub base, extensions, you know, anything in there that's a parameter to that subassembly will be in those that properties. So if you want to see it, and if you want to adjust it in Civil 3D, we have to put it here in the input output parameters. We'll go over that in detail. Um, typically, I like to sketch it out. So before I jump into Subassembly Composer, I have a good idea. I've got a detail that uh, maybe it's a municipality detail or something you drew. Uh, but I typically like to draw it out, um, do some labeling, and maybe add some codes in there just to get a good idea of what I may be missing as I, I'm building that subassembly. So once we draw it out, uh, then it makes it a little bit easier to create that subassembly. And then we'll do a couple quick examples in the, in the next couple videos. Um, the first one, I think we'll do a sidewalk with a swell and a sloped sidewalk and sloped uh, uh, swell. That could be variable. Something that in Civil 3D, you could piece this together using multiple um, subassemblies. We're going to create one subassembly for that entire section. Fairly basic, but it gets us familiar with how to work within Subassembly Composer. We'll do a couple smaller ones. Uh, this one, for example, we'll use a, a daylight with kind of a landing pad with a rounded curved um, daylight line. This will get us familiar with using um, aux points and, and different tools within Subassembly Composer. And then from there, we'll take some more advanced ones, we'll dissect them, and we'll get a lot more familiar with Subassembly Composer. So that's a quick review of the user interface and what to look forward in the upcoming videos.